Hey guys, you can now support this show and make your life 50% better by going to patreon.com forward slash the system is down and signing up for the Downers Club, where you're going to get access to a plethora of wild, crazy, and often offensive bonus audio and video episodes of the show on a weekly basis. For more information, just go to patreon.com forward slash the system is down. The following is a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net Welcome to the system is down. What is up, downers? Welcome back to the least comfortable show on the web. You know what it is. It's The System is Down, where we talk about all the uncomfortable topics like, but not limited to, conspiracies, politics, and religion. And if you're new here... You're not alone, because we've been getting quite an uptick lately, a nice steady increase in numbers and downloads and listenership, so that fills me with joy, and thank you to everyone who has been sharing the show uh, with new listeners. That's that's fantastic. Today's episode is my conversation with the great Tom Dunn about the Hampstead case, which, if you haven't heard about it, you're not alone there either, because I had not heard about it, but it is another horrifying case of... Satanic child abuse, to put it lightly. So this is not an episode to listen to around the kids. I shouldn't have to say that by now, but, you know, if they're in the room, you might want to put on the earmuffs or send them off to bed. I'm not going to judge you and your parenting style. You do what you want, but we're going to jump into that here in just a moment. Before we do, i got to remind you about uh, the Downers Club, which is our patron program. You can sign up at patreon.com forward slash the system is down and get a bunch of bonus audio and video content, including my extended interview with Tom today. I also got to give a big shout out to our sponsors, the 29 Toes podcast. Uh, Just guys sitting around drinking beers and talking about guy stuff like entertainment and maybe sports and media and Totally different things than what we typically talk about on this show, but it's a good time. It's a good chill listen. So go check out the 29 Toes podcast, wherever 29 Toes podcasts are sold. All right, you guys, here's my conversation with Tom Dunn. Without further ado, let's get weird. All right, my guest today is a uh, returning guest to the show from all the way back in episode nine in the very beginning of the system is down, a documentarian, podcaster, and fascinating individual, Tom Thomas Dunn. Tom, how you doing? Shout out to Carl Pendleton. He's the one who hooked me up with this gig. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. <laughs> yeah, he's... he's... I, I call him... I shouldn't have said that. CR. That's right. See, that's, that's right. how long I've known him, dude, and... <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for revealing his real name, but it's all good. Yeah, CR. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He and I are still in cahoots, and uh, uh, he's still in my sphere and causing trouble in my life. But you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> good, very yeah. good. I'm happy to hear that. Anyway, <laughs> Tom, you uh, you hit me up. Well, the first time you were on was talking about your first documentary called Detestable, which is uh, uh, talking about um, the satanic ritual abuse and that type of thing. Um, you sent me your new documentary that just came out called This is a War. Um, I checked that out, and I was planning on talking to you primarily about that, but I, uh, I, I saw one of your live videos that you put up on Facebook where you're talking about um, this, new, this new Hampstead case that I knew very I, I knew nothing about up until that point, and I still know very little about. So uh, I started digging into it a little bit, and just some fascinating stuff, and I would love for you to shed some light on this case and uh, tell me what you're doing with it. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to talk about that now? So, sure. Um, okay. Well, I made, a, I made a film, Detestable. It came out two years ago, a little over two years ago, and that film was about satanic ritual abuse and exposing it, okay? Now, when I say satanic ritual abuse, it freaks people out. So one of the things we've been trying to say is ritual abuse. People are scared to death of that word satanic. But anyway, it's the idea that people, that children have been abused in the setting of a satanic ritual, physically, uh, sexually, you know, mentally abused in the setting of a satanic ritual. And while I was making that film, this case was getting a lot of attention over in the UK. And I'd really prayed about, should I go over there and cover it? And I could not find anybody that 
I knew on the ground that I could trust to go over there and, and get the information I needed. And I had enough for the film, so we decided not to. Meanwhile, this has been going on this whole time. The Hampstead case, what is it, okay? Basically, what happened was two children gave testimonies about the exact same thing that's in my film. And they gave horrific testimonies and talked about things that kids under 10 years old should not know about. And if you, there's no, there's no shortage of these videos online. If you want to go look, look them up, type in, you know, Hampstead cover up and you'll see the, the videos of these kids that their parents took. Okay. So of, and also interviews done by professional interviewers uh, police investigators, and you'll see these interviews and you'll see, hear them say every single time the same thing, okay? So what happened is these videos were actually leaked a year after these events took place. And nobody would have ever known about them if somebody somewhere in the court system had not leaked these videos. And again, they detail what these kids went through. They, these kids give very detailed testimonies about what their teachers look like naked. Kids should not know that, okay? Uh, long story short, the mother found out this information. She went back to London to get justice for her kids and to expose this thing. Bad idea, she didn't know that. She thought she could count on the system. And what happened is they turned the tables and they said, you taught these kids these things and you taught them this script and you, taught, you told them because you're in a custody battle um, to do these things that way you could win custody. Well, she wasn't in a custody battle. She had full custody of her kids mm -hmm. and all of the stuff that came out of the media was just false. Um, also, if she wasn't in a custody battle and she was trying to get custody of her kids, making up like things that make you sound like a crazy person doesn't seem like the way to go, but <laughs> no. And why would she, why would she implicate all of the teachers? Why mm -hmm. not just the dad? You know, why would she say, Tell, okay, kids, this is what I want you to do. Say that the teachers had these very specific devil tattoos on their genitals, okay? Mm -hmm. And all, you know, just all these details, okay? And when they ask you what blood tastes like, tell them it tastes like metal. And just in case they ask you that question, okay? Right. And you see these interviews, and um, I'm telling you, I knew about this case, but because I knew I was going to be doing the campaign, which I'll mention here in a minute, mm -hmm. I, I dug in deeper and you can watch this investigator in a way, kind of trip these kids up and say, okay, so you've been to your teacher's house. What did you see when you walked in? And the kids describe, well, when you walk in, there's a table there and there's a, there's like a picture on it or whatever and describes furniture in the house. Okay. Right. And all of these details, it would have been easy to, to investigate this and either corroborate or discredit these kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made Michael Jackson pull his pants down. Why can't we get an investigator over there looking at these guys? Okay, this is this would be a normal thing, yeah. right? But um, what they did is they pressured these kids under duress to recant their story. Okay, and that's what happened. And they gave – there's so much testimony of these kids giving details about what happened to them. Okay, the things that we've been hearing for years and covering for years, what I covered in my film – and stories all around the world. This this is big for us because we've never had a break in a case like this before. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, we we get testimonies of sat satanic ritual abuse, but these kids named teachers. They gave details. They told locations. They told so many things about this. So this is a break, and we want to strike while the iron's hot, and we want to expose this. And, and again, this is a few years old. Yeah. But what happened in the UK is anybody that tried to make a noise about this, anybody that tried to um, say, hey, this is this is an injustice. This needs to be prosecuted. Th there was never an investigation done ever. Mm. They never looked into one of the, you know, uh, of the things these kids said. And instead, anybody that speaks out against this, you know, or tries to reveal it, they've been getting persecuted in the UK. I know people that have been run out of London. I know I hear so many stories of people that have been threatened, people showing up and just, you know, there is a blackout in London. If you, the videos about this case will not show up on YouTube in London, they've been censored. Mm. So there's something going on here. Somebody has some kind of power to try to 
silence the details of this case. They don't want them out. And let me tell you this, and you'll experience this too, Dan. Anytime that we talk, we talk about satanic ritual abuse a lot on my show through the black, I should mention. But when we talk about Hampstead, people come out, trolls come out of the woodworks, okay, to jump on us and to try and discredit us and just to say, hey, this is not true. So there is a systematic, um, you know, attack put in place for any time anybody talks about this case where they come out and they don't want the details of this to come out. They don't want anybody to believe the the truth about Hampstead. Now, why is it um, such a such an issue? Like, why would people? I I know why the uh, the powers that be would try to squash it if they don't want it to get out there. But um, I assume you're talking about like uh, just your lay person, the people who say that you know uh, PizzaGate and stuff like that is a bunch of nonsense. Uh, I don't understand why they would um, like. What's their justification for well, saying you're crazy? Uh, yeah. No, here's the thing. And when I researched this in the last couple of weeks, I already had a feeling about this, but I did enough research to verify that the people that are the trolls that are coming out against this are actually uh, mostly the father who's trying to um, who's trying to quiet this down. Mm -hmm. OK, he uh, it's been verified that many of these accounts lead back to him. Many of these accounts lead back to the people that were involved and they're trying to, for lack of a better word, save face or to protect themselves or, sure. you know, to attack the people that are coming out against it. What I think happened is this, this is what happens all the time. When somebody gets caught like this, they get thrown under the bus. Okay. They're like, okay, right. uh, you got caught. We're going to, you're the sacrificial lamb. We're going to protect the big guys, but you know, you're going to have to deal with it. That's yeah. what's going on. This guy, um, this father who was um, involved in the abuse has been connected to all these dummy accounts. And he is the main one going and saying, this is not true. You guys are making up lies, blah, blah, blah. These kids didn't do this. And you can go on YouTube again and see his ridiculous interview with the BBC where I, I don't know. I'm so frustrated with this, with <laughs> with the the cover up, you know. Sure. But the people that are doing this have a vested interest in protecting themselves. They won't name themselves. If they really believed what they were saying were true, they wouldn't be hiding behind a fake avatar and a fake picture and a fake name. I challenge them. Come out and reveal yourself. Right. Who are you? Right. You know, they won't do it because I know who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Well, let's jump back to what exactly happened real quick. Um, so the the case is basically that uh, the, these kids were under the supervision of their father and they were the, – it was their school that was uh, – Well, this is this, this is what happened. Um, the father was actually going to the school without the mother knowing. Okay. And the cult the, – this satanic cult was um, – their headquarters was at this – school and church. It was called Christ Church Primary. Okay. This is nothing new to us. These guys operate in churches all the time. Okay. Um, and they, I mean, we could pick on one church and we could say there's a ton of pedophilia in the Catholic church, that sort of thing. Yes, we know mm -hmm. that's true. Yes. Many of them are connected to Satanism. Uh, it's true for the Protestant church too. All they need is somebody, all they need to do is get a Satanist in there or somebody that's a pastor or even a janitor to get access to the church to harm kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what was going on is the father only had visitation like every other week or every Saturday or something like that. And he was actually going to the school after the mother dropped them off. And this is, uh, you know, been um, verified through the children's testimony over and over again. He would wait and then the whoever was in charge would say, OK, the coast is clear. The father would show up at the school and this is where the abuse would take place. And horrific things, Dan, uh, mostly crazy, ridiculous pedophilia and sexual abuse to these kids. These kids knew things about dildos. They knew things about anatomy that kids this age should not know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so were they, I mean, did the kids make accusations of them being harmed or them witnessing, you know, Both. harm coming to yeah. others? Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they talk about their sexual abuse they one of the testimonies the kids give and 
this is the one we've heard so many times, okay, is where they're made to kill a baby, okay? And a kid is not strong enough to cut the head off of a baby, and a kid doesn't have the stomach for it. A kid doesn't want to harm a baby. But what happens is they put their hand on the knife, and then the adult puts their hand over top of it. This is crazy stuff here, okay? This is crazy stuff uh, that I'm talking about right now. But I've heard this testimony so many times that I've lost track. Right. And these kids gave the same testimony, okay, mm -hmm. that kids all over the world are given. And they said because it was hard to do it, the father put their hand over the knife and help them solve these these babies' heads off. Where do you I don't go know if I there? answered your question. <laughs> Where <laughs> yeah. do you go from there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, they drank blood. They mm -hmm. they saved the skulls of the babies. They used the skin. They ate the meat. Okay. Um, and they gave detail. You know. And here's the thing: you listen to the testimonies. They'll tell you where they kept the bowls at. You know, in the kitchen of the school, they say, OK, you go into the, the kitchen and it's up in this cupboard and it's in the back or whatever. And they had goblets and they had a big white bowl where they would where they would use it for something, you know, and mm. they gave details where everything was and how they hid the stuff and, it, you know, how they would clean up afterwards and, all, you know, all of these things and, and talked about dancing naked with the skulls, you know, mm -hmm. hanging on them, you know, just like uh jewelry made out of out of the out of the skeletons of the babies right yeah and i've heard a, a little a few of the clips of the the kids talking and they just talk about it so uh passively which i mean you could take that as they got used to it and they were you know conditioned to think that that's normal or whatever you could also take it as i mean i could see where where somebody's pushback would be like you know if the mom's just telling them to say this then they're just gonna talk about it with no emotion or anything um what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Yeah, you know, I, I really examined these um, these interviews, and I think if if you just pay close attention and you watch them, I think it's easy to tell that these kids are telling the truth. Okay, it's easy. I mean, I think you can tell a kid at that at the at the age that they are, which was under ten years old. I think it was like eight and nine years old. I you can't convince me that they had the ability. Maybe if it was a short script, okay. Maybe if right. it was a short script, but all of the detail they gave and all of the all of the curveballs that th they were thrown mm -hmm. when they were being questioned, they had an answer for it, you yeah. know, and the, the interviewer say, how do you know that? How do you know that? And he said, well, I know that. And they would give an answer why they knew that information, you know, so it's it, I, I, it's so hard to do this kind of research because you get angry, mm -hmm. you you empathize with the victims. I mean, you don't want to know these things. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't want to know these things. Yeah. I I would rather not know them. Yeah. But somebody's got to do it. So I guess for right now, that I'm one of the people that does. Right. Now, how long did this uh, allegedly go on for before the mom found out about it and reported on it? Well, you know, when you listen to the mother's um, testimony, and uh, her name is. Her name is Ella Draper, but I, th I think her she's originally went back to her maiden name or something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, we actually did an interview with her on our show about a, a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And when you hear her, she talks about man. She said something was wrong with my kids for a long time for a long time, and I didn't know what it was, mm -hmm. you know. And what and what began happening is um, she began to catch them acting out sexually. And doing things to animals sexually. Yeah. And the kids were trained by the father to do things to distract the mother, like say, hey, uh, could you make us something to eat? We're hungry when they weren't hungry. So she would be distracted so they could go and act out sexually in another room. Mm. Okay. And um, there, there was a – the mother's boyfriend was involved and he began catching them. And the father would tell them, you need to do this five times a day. You know, and he would and they, you know, they thought they had a secret. And when they got caught, they finally admitted the truth about what's been going on. And they said, yeah, our father um, told us to steal money. Our mm. father told us to this is crazy, but to take your toothbrush and wipe it on the toilet. They were doing stuff like that. So you would get sick, mm. you know, and I mean, 
so much detail came out and they they admitted the truth and so much damage has been done to these kids i can't imagine you know I, I, it's just a nightmare it yeah. is just a nightmare the mother went to get help and they turned the tables on her and they said no you're the abuser mm-hmm. you've done these things and i mean you can tell and if again we we made up a website where you can get a lot of this stuff. I didn't even mention the medical report, okay? Because these kids were examined um, by a professional doctor, and the doctor confirmed that they had been sodomized. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the, and on our website, thelegendarycampaign.com, you can go and you can uh, you can look at the medical report. We have links to it. Mm-hmm. Wow. So who is the father? Is he a person of high standing that would have yeah, the power? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. The father, uh, he's he's went into hiding now, but he's not hiding very good. His name <laughs> was Ricky Dearman, and I forget what it is right now. He goes under another name, but he's kind of in hiding. He's actually in the United States, and he has custody of the kids. So really, the yeah. So the the person who was doing the abusing got the kids back, and I'm telling you what my experience with these with these people they don't quit abusing. Mm. They don't quit abusing. So, I, you know, again, this guy should be in a prison somewhere, but instead he was awarded custody of his kids. It, it, I mean, it's amazing. I forget what your question is. Who's the father? He's actually yeah. an actor. Uh, he was like a like a low, like a not even – he's a below a, a B actor, right? Mm-hmm. And he was wanting to break out, obviously, into Hollywood, make it big time. The guy's got charisma. And I think that the powers that be, whoever they are, I mean, you know, say whatever you want. The Illuminati, the New World Order, these Luciferian Satanists, I believe that that, he, that this guy was compromised. Excuse me. And they were getting ready to break him. In other words, they're getting ready to put him out there to be an actor. Yeah. Uh, he, I mean, as far as looks, he had what it took, sure. you know, but now because he got caught in this, he's not going to be the next, you name it, you know, sure. whatever actor. Yeah. Um, so, wow. So how did he get custody of the kids? Because of course the pushback to that would be, if he has custody, then she was obviously making this up since the courts ruled in his favor again and let him keep the yes. children. Right, right. I don't know. I don't know the details of that because we didn't. We haven't known where the kids were for a few years. Mm-hmm. As far as those of us that have been looking into this, we thought they were in protective, you know, custody yeah. in the um, in the UK. So you know, I don't know what the details were, but the mother had, you know, she had fled the country because for fear of prosecution. Because mm-hmm. they were trying to say that she um, made this story up to get custody. Well, uh, another part of her story, she recently passed a polygraph test when asked those questions. Did you um, did you brainwash your kids or did you um, have your kids make up this, this story? Yeah. And she, she passed that test with flying colors. Those are not easy to, to beat. So how did the father get custody? I don't know. The only thing that I – a couple different options. One, the mother wasn't there mm-hmm. and they, he somehow got custody. And I think that's part of the strategy also say to say, okay, we're going to give you custody. That even makes you look even more innocent. Yeah. You know, I mean, man, the courts, the courts were complicit in this. There's no doubt. And they were covering up for somebody. Um, they could not let this get out. And the truth of this get out because it was connected to more people. Look at the case of Jimmy Savile in the UK. Jimmy Savile was a radio TV personality and he had been abusing kids in satanic rituals for years, connected to the royals, okay? Yep. Look up Jimmy Savile. Here's another case of satanic ritual abuse in the UK and nothing, even, um, oh, Johnny Rotten called him out 30 years ago and said, this guy is abusing kids, okay? And um, Johnny Rotten got, you know, uh, blacklisted or, you know, they wouldn't let him on any more interviews because he called Jimmy Savile out for abusing kids. So 
and the testimonies, I mean, probably 20 people or more came out and said, I was in a satanic ritual with Jimmy Savile. This is a UK thing. But it didn't come out until after he died. And even then, they don't talk about the satanic part of, you know, of the crime. They just talk about the the pedophilia part or the sure. sexual abuse. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, and on a somewhat related note, I, I mean, the whole him getting custody thing just baffles me. And we had uh, Kelly Jones on recently, uh, Alex Jones's ex-wife, who they had their big dispute. And regardless of what you think of Alex Jones, it, like if she's telling the truth, it's very bizarre that uh, that he has custody of their children. Um, and I can see how people would. I mean, all of course, all the YouTube comments on those videos are uh, this is just an angry ex-wife who's going crazy and going way out of her way to, you know, make this guy look bad. Do you think there's any possibility that that could be the case? Um, Here's the thing, man. If you have enough money, you can get whatever you want. Sure. You know, if you have power, if you have money, uh, there's I mean, you, you, you won't have to go to prison. You can kill people. You can do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? And. I'm there's tons of of cases and I deal with these things all the time. We get the emails, we get the messages. I know so many mothers, honestly, who have lost custody of their kids and the kids are in a dangerous situation. Man, I'm just I'm I'm thinking of these people. I know these faces and a lot of them become friends of mine because mm-hmm. I prayed with them and stuff like this. So and usually the case is that the father had power and money and he was able to do something. A lot of times they, they can, um, they can trick him into sign him, signing over custody. You know what I'm saying? I've heard of things like this. There's a lot of different ways that they get custody. I think in this case though, this was to protect the coven. And, you know, part one was make the mom look crazy. Uh, and mm-hmm. also just, they brought this guy out as a victim on BBC. You can watch the interview, look up, um, Look up Ricky Dearman interview on BBC. I'm telling you what, you don't need any spiritual discernment. No, this guy's lying. Okay. Okay. Um, And um, you see the interview, man. And uh, I just, I get, I get frustrated thinking about it. But anyway, I think part one, make the mother look crazy, you know, defend the father, make the father look like a victim. He's been a victim of a false accusation and to confirm it all. You know, give him the kids. How did that happen? I don't know. The only way it could happen is if the courts were complicit and they were in on it, which uh, in my, the, you know, in my world, I see that a lot. Yeah. So you say there was zero investigation into the allegations with all the, yes. all the, I, I mean, you only, you typically when you're like trying a, a situation like this, you have a, a person who makes an accusation, then if somebody else can corroborate like another witness... Uh, Mm -hmm. then you've got a a really good case. And if like, were the kids stories, uh, were they adding up? Did they, uh, actually like, were they saying exactly the same things down to the detail? Because I mean, uh, with like, I mean, I don't, we, I don't want to get into this, but like the Kavanaugh situation where she's got very little evidence, but it's still this huge case. Uh, it sounds like these kids had the whole story, uh, from who knows years of years of, uh, abuse and, they agreed with each other, but zero yeah. investigation. Yeah, all, all the details were the same, and they were interviewed separate. They said the exact same thing. Mm. You know, there's an interesting video online. I, I wouldn't know how to tell you how to find it, but you can um, – somebody's went to a lot of trouble to like – they've taken a, um, a layout of the school, and they've kind of used – they put the interview over top of it, and you can see the diagram like – uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, a a um, I, I, what do you call it? A draft or the um, architecture layout or whatever? Sure, like and, schematics. Yes, and mm-hmm. then you can see they'll show you like um, as she's given her testimony, what what it looks like as she's walking through her school. They ask her what happens when you go to school, and and she's walking, and they say, well, in our classroom, there's a you know there's a closet back here. All these details, you know, and they give us candy. Uh, so they can do sex to us, you know, Mm. just so, so many details. They were describing semen, not knowing what it was, just calling it white stuff. I don't know what this white stuff was, but Mm. it kept getting on us, you know? And, um, 
and they, you know, again, they would describe the layout of the school and where this was and where this took place and how they hid and what time of the day certain things happened and Mm -hmm. who was involved. And they named names and they named, and they said, this person, this person, and they would describe their, um, they would describe their private parts in detail that, you know, no investigation was done to that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, I, I, I mentioned Michael Jackson, people accused him and and I I know we're dealing with different countries here, but he had to go in and have, you know, have his junk photographed. Uh, This would, it would be such an easy thing to prove Like if everybody in this school has tattoos of like Satanist imagery on their genitalia, how easy would it be to prove that these kids are telling the truth? (laughs) Yeah. Or that they're lying and they have it thrown out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, So yeah, I mean, so many details like that were in there and again, interviewed separately, uh, said the same thing. I mean, the, the deeper you dig into this case, the more confirmation you get about what, you know, that these kids are telling the truth. Yeah. Now was the, the custody battle, did that, was that carried out in the U S or the UK? Um, there was no custody battle. Here's the thing. Um, the truth behind the story is the, the father had given up custody. And then he came back and he got visitation like it was either every Saturday or every other other Saturday. I don't know how they do it in the UK. And the mother thought, okay, this is the only thing that's going on is he's seen him every Saturday. He they didn't know. She didn't know that he was going to school (laughs) every day. Yeah. And she was leery about it because she had been abused. Mm -hmm. She'd been physically abused by this guy. And she's like, this is not. She didn't know about the full extent of it when she said, yeah, Saturday's fine. She didn't know. Yeah. About the well, she she was leery about it, but mm-hmm. um, she agreed to it. Okay, but the so, kids but at that point no custody, hadn't yeah. hadn't said anything about what was going on. No, yeah, the kids the kids kept it secret for I don't know how long. Okay, but um, he had he had like given up custody and, and left, mm-hmm. you know, and, and was gone. Yeah. So he he wasn't even in the picture, and then he came back wanting wanting some kind of visitation, but she had full custody. So that had been settled a while before, sure. you know, a couple years before this even happened. How, how does that even ha- like, how does she have full custody? Then he gets visitation rights. Then he has full custody. Um, like it's just very, very strange situation. Exactly. I agree. I agree 100%. And, uh, something, something stinks. I don't know what it is. I don't know the details of it, but, um, so you said you talked I, to the mom. Like, what is yeah, what is she did. doing now? Like these days, um, is she still in the UK? I mean, I, I don't. I haven't talked to her in over a year. And mm-hmm. the latest thing that I've seen from her is she had a um, a professional. Uh, sorry about that. Are you fine? Uh, uh, a professional. Somebody brought in a professional polygraph guy, and she. Uh, was administered this test. That's the latest thing that's been in the last few months. Yeah. I don't know what she's been doing. Um, she's she's just been kind of in a situation where there's not a lot she can do. Yeah. So she she didn't want to go back to London because of fear of prosecution. But they never indicted her, and I don't think they would because if they did, then she could she could bring all this stuff to you know to trial. Right. right. And. and and uh, these witnesses. I mean, obviously, there's been plenty of time to remove the tattoos by now. Yeah. But they went in all the forensic evidence, you know, shortly after this happened, that school had an overhaul and uh, just um, completely um, gutted and, and fixed up. So there's mm-hmm. all the forensic evidence is probably gone. Sure. Uh, the kids gave details about the inside of their teacher's house and how there was a false wall downstairs where they would go back there mm. and do rituals. So, you know. Um, I don't, I don't know the answer to why does a father have custody? I have to speculate, sure. you know, it's, because we know, I mean, if you look at the Belgium case and what happened there with Mark Trudeau, I don't know if you're familiar with that case, nope. but, um, <laughs> that happened in the nineties where this guy got caught. His name was Mark Dutro, and he got caught abusing all these kids and he got three years he got like all these years in prison they let him out in three years Mm. and um then after they let him out girls started disappearing again right around him Mm. long story short they found the dead bodies in his basements and his properties and stuff like that and they tried to let him go again 
And the, the people, thousands and thousands of people in Belgium took to the streets and just went nuts because they were going to let this guy go who had been raping and killing these girls. Right. Okay, they're going to give him. And the reason, from what we understand, the reason why the courts were going to let him go or why they so light on him, because judges and police officers were involved in this pedophilia and these snuff films and all this stuff. So they were trying to cover up, you know, what these elites were involved in. Hey, Dan Smots here. I'm taking a second to interrupt myself talking to talk about myself because, you know, I don't get paid a penny for the hours and hours that I put into creating this show for you guys in your greedy little ears. And I've got a family to feed. To make that happen, I run my own media business called Goulash Media. If you have a need in anything from video production to graphic design to audio production and beyond, you can get it all for a painfully fair price at Goulash Media. In video, I do weddings, music videos, commercials, pageants, plays, etc., etc., etc. For design, I do photo editing editing, album art, logos, branding, business cards, merchandise, you name it. For audio, I do engineering, production, editing, jingles, and, well, podcasts. So if you've got a media need of any kind, or if you'd just like to give a little something back and help keep my children fed, check out all the endless options at my website, goulashmedia.net. That's goulash, G-O-U-L-A-S-H, media.net, where we cater to the little guy with the big vision. (sighs) Okay. One of the strangest things about this case, I mean, besides all the obvious strangeness, is that uh, one of the two, no, no matter which side of the story that you believe, what doesn't make sense is why one of these, one of the two of these people isn't in jail. Like, if you believe the the dad's story that the wife is just a crazy, angry ex who's telling her kids like all these horrific things and basic, I mean, that's psychological abuse telling your kids those things. So the fact that she's not in prison should be pretty, would be kind of evidence that, uh, she might be telling the truth and they don't want to, uh, uh, I don't know. They, they want to, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of different ways I, well, to look no, at it. I agree. I agree. And yeah, it doesn't make sense. I think if anybody would take the time to look at this case and look at the details, um, and I mean, the children's testimonies are one thing. When you go into the deep interviews that the parents did, that the mother and the boyfriend did, they give a lot of detail of what was going on years before what led up to the disclosure, okay? And they, she was recognizing things and they were like, for example, she would say, I don't know what happened to my daughter, but she lost empathy for other human beings. It was just like something was wrong, like the light went out in her eyes, and I didn't know. Right. She's like, I was trying to figure out I'm a bad mom. What happened? Mm-hmm. You know, and you hear the cry from this mother, and she sincerely was just dumbfounded, like, what am I doing wrong as a parent? You mm-hmm. know, she had an older son, you know, from a previous relationship. But something happened to these kids where they were just losing compassion and empathy and and they she could tell something happened to my kids. Yeah. And by the way, um, the the father, Ricky Deerman, came from a generational family. Okay, a generational satanic family. Mm -hmm. And the kids in one of the interviews give the detail about how their grandmother, their grandparents abused and did sex to their father, Ricky Dearman, and he did it to them. And they said, when we grow up, we're supposed to do it to our kids. Okay, how did this mother just was, how was she able, nobody knows this stuff. Right. Okay, if your average person doesn't know about satanic ritual abuse, but- She'd have to do her homework to make up this story is what you're saying. Oh yeah, you you really, I'm I'm telling you what, you really had to, and she didn't know about it until Mm -hmm. she was in the middle of it. I'm telling you what. And how is she giving all the right details? You know, okay, guys, this is the script. Can you get this? I mean, can you imagine the rehearsals they right. had to do? And it's just not true. It's just not true. This, These things really happen to these kids. And the deeper you dig, the more confirmation that you get. Mm. So time frame wise, like when did this happen? and Or like when did this start to come out? Because like I said, I'm it's totally new to me right now. And, uh, yeah. Um, three years ago, I think in 2015 is when it came out publicly, but I believe a year before that is when, is when she went back to London seeking justice. 
you know, for her kids. I, I, I'm not really 100% clear on all the timeline. So right now they're probably about 12 and 13 years old. So three years ago, they were eight and nine, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, leading up, I mean, I, I believe the father, even though he disappeared for a little while, he was probably abusing them even when they were infants because sure. he's generational. And here's the thing. Uh, as much of a scumbag as I think this father is, he's a victim too. It happened to right. him. Yeah. So how old w were the kids at the time and how old would that make them now? Um, I, I'm not sure on the ages. I want to say they're probably 12 and 13 right about now. Okay. Okay. Uh, they resurfaced recently and, and you can find the video again, they resurfaced with their father in the LA area. Okay. There's a, there's a video of this online and he's doing the same thing under a different name. Uh, the same types of businesses that he was doing before, like internet type, um, businesses where he sells like some kind of dietary information on websites. Okay. Mm. And he's got his kids making slime, believe it or not. And they won an award for having the best internet slime business. Okay. And it, it had to do with maybe eBay or something like that. And you can find these videos out there. And this is the first time we've seen the kids. It, this just surfaced in the last couple of months really? where we see what the kids look like now and we see the father and there they are accepting this award on a video eBay, eBay thing. So very yeah. bizarre, very strange. You would think if you went through, if he's like, you know, completely clean, if, if everything he says is true and he like all of this is fabricated, I, if I were him, at least I would want to <laughs> avoid all public eye for the rest of my life. Like, please, you would please that, don't look yeah. at me anymore. <laughs> yeah. You would think that be like, okay. Um, let, let's just keep, a, you know, let's keep a DL right now. Right. But here's the thing. This is what I believe about him. And a lot of these um, these people that have been through this, they're what we call MPD, multiple personality disorder. OK, mm -hmm. um, some of his profiles and some of his avatar avatars, they've linked him to making really crude comments about children. So why, if you're being viewed in a. Um, you know, if you're under a microscope like this, why in the world would you make a, a sexual comment about a child somewhere? And this is what they found. Um, th this is what they found him doing. Well, probably because he is an MPD, multiple personality disorder, and he mm -hmm. can't help it. He's a predator and he's been programmed and he's going to do this. He has no control. It would make sense to even if you thought that to never say it, especially right. after what you've just been accused. of. Right. Yeah. Yeah, very, very strange. Um, and we see that all throughout, like, all the Pizzagate uh, evidence and stuff like that, too. It's just like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's very bizarre. Um, so you're uh, you're working on this campaign to kind of help expose this case. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I had this idea about a year and a half ago, and we had to wait until the time was right to do it. And we just decided to launch it. We launched it Monday night. And the name of the campaign, and I'll show you some props here. The name of the campaign is The Legendary Campaign. And the idea behind it is to bring exposure to satanic ritual abuse. Mm -hmm. Now, we're using this case and we're screaming about this case because – um, there's lots of satanic ritual abuse cases in America. We have lots of information and we have lots of testimony, but I think most people that are in this, you know, area of research would agree that we have not had a break in a case like the Hampstead case in a long time where all of these details are out again, names of people, places, details about the body, all of these things. And, um, very credible testimony. These kids gave very credible testimony. Not that no one else's testimony is credible, yeah. but, you know, the innocence of a child, okay? So what we decided to do is take this case, scream about it, you know, pray for justice, try to get people's attention. And even though the people in the UK are persecuted or they're threatened with jail time, they're threatened with all with fines if they talk about this case in the UK. What the heck does that tell you, man? Mm -hmm. Why why in the world anyway? Yeah. Um so we came up 
with the idea of let's let's talk about this. Let's expose this. OK, just like just like anything we want to expose, you know, this there's a lot of people that want justice and they're social justice warriors. We're kind of uh, trying to cater to that um, desire in people. Yeah. OK, so what we did is we came up with this campaign and we are working this similar. I hate to use this word, but similar to a political campaign. Mm -hmm. grassroots, boots on the ground, people just spreading the awareness about the campaign. So in the past few weeks, I've been busy designing and making materials, mm -hmm. campaign materials, to get in the hands of people that care about this case and that care about satanic ritual abuse. This is a way that we can present it to them where it doesn't freak them out. You know, you say, hey, do you know about satanic ritual abuse? Person runs away right. scared. <laughs> That, that freaks them out. But right. say, hey, do you know about this case of, you know, these kids that were abused in the UK and the government let it go and now they're back in the hands of the perpetrator and all this horrible thing. And we, you know, you can put this card in uh, in people's face. And this is um, this is a card. I had 10,000 of these made up and they're going out fast. Mm -hmm. And um, it says, we demand Hampstead justice now. Mm -hmm. Then on the back, there's a picture of Parliament and a and a quote by Winston Churchill and it's the legendarycampaign.com. And if they go to that website, they can get all of the, not all of the information, but just kind of a Reader's Digest version of the information. You can get links to the medical reports, links to videos, testimonies, sure. that sort of thing. So we're, we're trying to, we have T-shirts made up. We have stickers and buttons and just all this stuff just to kind of encourage people. The response has been amazing. We launched this campaign almost four days ago, about three and a half days ago. And I had invested money to start this up, $1,600. Mm -hmm. We just today made that back. And now all the money, again, we're not doing this to capitalize on this. All the money is recycled back into the campaign. Sure. And we want to do something that's never been done before. People talk about human trafficking. People talk about abortion, which I think are no, no, noble things to to say, hey, this this should not be, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is what we do. Um, we talk about satanic ritual abuse. We want to expose it. We know there's victims out there that, that are afraid to come out, and this gives them courage. Uh, I've gotten so many emails, thank you for what you're doing, thank you for what you're doing, and, and donations, and people buying the shirts. And if you go to the website, thelegendarycampaign.com, you'll see a store down there. And we have different kits, you know, like we have the lone wolf. We have the, the agitator kit, you know, where <laughs> yeah. you can get buttons and wristbands. And then we have the um, we have the troublemaker kit. And then we have the agent provocateur kit. OK, nice. <laughs> so whatever your flavor, uh, we had a, we had some flags made up or like some banners made up where people can, you know, do whatever they want with them, take get their pictures taken with them. But we're trying to spread this like a disease, so to speak. OK, yeah. they don't want us talking about this. So we're talking about it in a big way. And we're using this to open up the door to talk about the epidemic of satanic ritual abuse. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend a dime to get involved in this. If anybody wants to help, if anybody cares about this, you can go and just share the memes on Facebook mm -hmm. or tweet them out. You know, that's what we're asking it to do. It's not it has nothing to do with uh with making money again we're not making anything all the money is recycled back in we hope to get billboards we hope just to blast this out in a way take ads out nice. uh different places and get get the word out and this is another one of the cards this is looks like this is kind of like a bookmark mm -hmm. and it just says the legendary campaign and then on the back you can see um uh real you know behind the, this um these uh it says, do you want to know a secret behind that? There's pictures of missing kids, mm. okay? And it's the idea of just kind of pique people's interest. Do right. you want to know a secret, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, people, you know, you can put this, go to go to a bookstore, put it in a Bible, put it in a uh, in an occult book or whatever. <laughs> this, is the gr this is a great month to do this because this is obviously the month of Halloween. And mm -hmm. we're seeing all kinds of um, just, you know, I'm sure you've seen these shirts out there where it's uh, you can go to like Spencer's or a store at the mall and it's uh, the activities for children shirts where it says, let's sacrifice Timmy, okay? Mm. This is a spit in the face to children like this that have been through this, you right. know? And it's just like, it, 
I'm not. I am so unimpressed with these ideas and this just mockingly just saying human sacrifice is a joke, right? Yeah. And we're, I mean, we're we're just challenging people. Hey, get involved if they're gonna if they're gonna do this. I'm not trying to shut down that T-shirt company, but if you know, we we want to say, hey, here's an opportunity. Okay, we see this shirt here. Um, did you know about this case? Maybe you might want to look into it. You know, right. um, this shirt is kind of making light of it, but actually, if I think if you look at the testimonies of these kids, you will be surprised that this is real. This is going on, and this is not a joke. Yeah. So we want to try and take that, take this opportunity, especially of this month. But I mean, it's not over. You know, on Halloween, we're just going to keep going. And sure. if we if we scream about this, where will we be at in a year? How many mm-hmm. people will know about this that have never known about it before? You mm-hmm. know, it could it's just like 9-11, you know. People screamed about that for years, and so many people know the truth, you know. Whether you think, um, you know, I mean, nobody believes JFK was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. Come on, <laughs> right. you know. But we we had to, you know, get out there and grassroots, and the Internet is, a, you know, an amazing tool to to spread this message. So we're doing it that way, and we're doing it by dropping the cards off. The cards lead everybody back to the website where the information is. Gotcha. So with this campaign, is the the ultimate goal, is it just spreading awareness or is there anything going on with this yeah, case? No. Are you trying to reopen a case or anything no, like that? No, we want to put pressure. I mean, um, right now we're spreading awareness. We're trying mm-hmm. to get people involved, okay? But we are going we, – we have different actions. One of, the, one of the most important things part of this campaign is prayer. OK, and that's where this is going to be. One is in our prayer closet. OK, uh, you know, hey, thanks. Thanks for passing out the cards. That's awesome. But we really want you to pray. We want to pray for justice. Sure. Um, God knows how to handle this. He can deal with this. If we call out to him and say, Lord, we need you to get involved in this. I believe something powerful is going to happen. OK, um, yeah, we want to put pressure on the London Metropolitan Police to do something. We want to help our friends across the pond say, hey, guys, we realize that you've been silenced and you've been threatened, but we are not threatened in the U.S. And we're going to scream about this mm-hmm. and we're going to use this. When we scream about this, we're screaming about every case. We're screaming about every victim. And, yeah, we do want a real investigation. And we do want um, these kids taken away from their father. OK, mm-hmm. because I 100 percent believe this guy, he's a predator. OK. And again, I believe he's been victimized himself. But. This is ridiculous that this guy's been put back. These kids have been put back in harm's way. We want a real investigation. Where where are these teachers at now? Where are all these perpetrators? You know, can somebody get off their butt and go do a real investigation? (laughs) Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let's touch briefly on the initial topic that I thought we were going to talk about, which is your (laughs) your new documentary. Uh, Tell me a tell me a little bit about that. You know, um, this docu- documentary, um, new film that I did, I always wanted to make a movie. I've been wanting to make a movie for a long time. And now I made two of them. That's like double cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I I was on my way to make a sequel to Detestable. Mm-hmm. And I took I took a detour. And when you're making a film, like if you, um, you know, you spend money to go to California to do interviews, I want to get as many interviews as I, interviews as I can So I'm like, I can make another movie while I'm out here. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. And I began interviewing some other people. And this side project is what happened first. Uh, I'm I'm working on several different films right now. But um, this one is what popped up first. And all the interviews just kind of fell into place. Mm -hmm. None of these people in this film know each other. And they kind of, in some ways, completed each other's sentences. And everything kind of fit together. Yeah. So I have people like a tattoo artist. I have a, uh, a pioneer in Christian. Um, what am I trying to say? Just, um, she, she's a, she's a warrior, uh, Johanna Michelson, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we're trying to get people connected to who she was. She wrote the book, the beautiful side of evil over 30 years ago, mm-hmm. probably close to 40 years ago and exposed all this supernatural stuff. We have Derek Gilbert from Skywatch news. I got a guy who I met in the hallway in Texas who was a gangbanger. <laughs> And um, his name is Mark Salinas. He has an amazing testimony how he got shot and he, he found God. And, uh, you know, just, you know, uh, Brett Prince, the tattoo artist, he gives his um, testimony about how he became a Mason. 
mm-hmm. you know, and uh, he was a Luciferian. He's got you can see the tattoo right on his eye. He's got a right. Luciferian sigil and how he got saved. I, he, I don't really talk about his um, his testimony much in this film because that's out there. But we talk about his um, his involvement in the Masons and, and all that stuff. And he yeah. exposes that and and um, just kind of a little bit of his upbringing. Um, who else is in the film? Let me look. Um, sorry. Dirt. Uh, yes, Dirt. Jeremiah Dirt. <laughs> um, I've known uh, Jeremiah for like, I don't call him Jeremiah, I call him Dirt, but I've known him for over 20 years. Yeah. And it's, that's another example. I'm going to California. I need another interview. One got canceled. What could I do? Oh, yeah. How about you? Right. <laughs> and so I called him up and he's like, yeah, I'll do it. I guess I got there and he was sleeping and he just like woke up and he's like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> and, and, um, dude, when I was filming that interview, I was like, oh man, this is good. This is good. I, I just love this guy. He's such a genuine guy. He's oh, he so is. ghetto, but he <laughs> loves God so much. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And he's just, he's just awesome, man. And he, he just told it, he just gave his heart. You yeah. know, and he's like, man, I've been through some stuff and, you know, I believe in spiritual warfare and, you know, this happened and that's happened. This affected me. And just just an amazing guy. You know, it was it was super cool to um, to interview him. And I just I just saw him again. And he was on our show last week. Nice. Uh, just a real genuine guy. I love him. You know, yeah, I uh, I remember listening to uh, Dirt like, I don't know, 20 years ago on TV and all that stuff. And. Uh, I had no idea that he was still doing anything, and I was at Audio Feed this last summer. This is a side tangent, but it's it's relevant. <laughs> but I was at Audio Feed this last summer, and I was like, man, there's no like, there's no good hip hop here, no good rap, because I always seek that stuff out. And uh, one of my friends was like, oh, Dirt's here. I was like, Dirt? I haven't heard that name in 20 years. Are you kidding me? And went and saw him. I, I took a live video of it because I was like, dude, I, I, I didn't even know you were still doing stuff. And you liked the video and commented on it or something. And then I watch your new documentary and he's in there. And I'm like, I didn't even know this guy was still a thing. So very, very small, weird, weird world. That we yeah, were. yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, yeah, I saw that video. So I was like, cool, Dan is filming dirt. This is awesome. Yeah, a great guy, though. I, I chatted with him after the show. And I mean, there was a guy who staggered into the show, like completely drunk, totally interrupted the entire show to uh, just mumble uh, at the front of the stage. And he was just super loving to the guy. I talked to him a, for a long time after and uh, had everybody stand around and pray for him and stuff like that. Just super chill. Great guy. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. He is. Absolutely. So what were we talking about? Oh, your documentary. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, you know, one of the guys in the film is a guy named Matt Mraz, who's actually a friend of my son. Okay. And he came over. It's it's weird. You know, um, I got I have good relationships with my son's friends and they, you know, sometimes I go hang out with him and, and eat, you know, take him out to eat or whatever. And Matt c- came over for a prayer need. And then he told me his testimony. And I was like, wow, it's pretty intense, you know. And, you know, the stuff that he's been through. And I was yeah. like, let's put let's put it out there, you know, and we did the inter- I did an interview with him first on our show. And then I was like, let's do an interview for the film and put it out there. Mm-hmm. And we did that. And the other guy is a name uh, is a guy named Seth Dreyer, who's actually my daughter's boss, uh, mm-hmm. one of my daughter's, bo- you know, bosses. And he's just a pro-life apologist. And he, you know, I love the footage of him because I went to um, D.C. and I was with a w- women's march last uh january Mm -hmm. and he's just in the midst of all that craziness and just you know in a place that's like a hostile environment for somebody like him and he's just holding his own and talking to these people and just knocking them down one at a time and just saying hey you know you're wrong this is why you're wrong and you're allowed to you're allowed to have your opinion but you're not allowed to have your own facts he's really good at what he does and um, it just worked out perfect. I thought when I went to D.C., I was like, ah, I didn't know I was going to use that footage in the film. And, and I thought, man, this was this was kind of a waste because I wanted to get something different. Mm-hmm. And it was cool because I ended up using the footage in the film. So sweet. Very cool. So, I mean, the, the basically the premise of this film is just talking about spiritual warfare. You said that yeah. it wasn't it wasn't planned. It was just kind of like something that you no. fell into after getting a bunch of stories or how'd that work? Well, yeah, I, it was loosely planned. Sure. And I was like, I, okay, I'm going to get these guys on the side talking about this. That way, you know, I got, I had some interviews canceled for the other film, and I was like, I don't want to do nothing. So let's let's do something, and that's what ha- happened. And you know, it's interesting because you have Seth, you know, doing his thing, and 
doing his abortion apologetics, you know. And then you have um, J. Brett Prince's testimony. And I didn't know he was going to say that. And he revealed that for the first time about his experience with abortion when he was younger. Right. You know, so all this stuff just kind of fit together. And then Dirt, you know, had some connections with the guy from Texas, Mark, Mm. and, you know, his testimony. So it was interesting how it just kind of all fit together. Um, And yeah, I I just, basically I put people in front of a camera. I said, talk about spiritual warfare. Is it real? (laughs) What is it? What does it mean to you? And then we just made a movie. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. I watched it earlier today. I really enjoyed it. Um, Another, another great job, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. For sure. So, um, also, uh, well, tell everybody where they can find out more information about you, the documentaries, the legendary campaign, and everything that you got going on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Throughtheblack.com is our website, and uh, that's also the name of our YouTube show. So we this month we're going live like every day uh, nice. just because we want to talk about this campaign. Yeah. But we, uh, I have a, a co-host, Jared, and we've been doing this for about a year and a half, and we talk about fringe subjects in, in light of, you know, uh, biblical worldview, mm-hmm. like anything from Bigfoot to UFOs to, uh, Flat he Earth. had a guy on last night who went to, uh, who went to Burning Man. So, um, just all of these things in light of scripture. And we, we always try to bring it back to scripture. We try to do a lot of training too for spiritual warfare, but the focus this month is exposing satanic ritual abuse. Gotcha. Very cool. Uh, but anyway, yeah, through the black dot com, mm-hmm. you can you can rent the films through Vimeo. You can rent d- detestable, and this is a war. Mm-hmm. So uh, and then we got all kinds of ridiculous swag on there. <laughs> I don't know. We're almost. We got coffee mugs. We got all that junk. I don't. You know, <laughs> t shirts. Sure. So, but um, yeah, that's where you can find the movies. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, you can rent it on Vimeo or you can buy the actual DVD, by the way. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the film detestable. That's the new cover. We just had it repressed. Very nice. And, um, then cool. and if you're looking for it, this is the film, this is a war. So, nice. uh, if you want a hard copy, they're available through the black.com. Cool, man. And you said, uh, legendary campaign.com. Is that. Led, yeah, legendarycampaign.com is uh, – it'll lead you back to the same place but a different okay. page. So, yeah, guys, um, we're, we're just asking people to get involved. You know, uh, I'm not above begging. You know, <laughs> I say I'm not asking. I'm begging. Get sure. involved. Yeah. Do something. You know, uh, we're making a difference, and we're, we're going we're going to do something awesome. And I'm really excited about this campaign. I'm really excited about the response that we got less than four days. We've raised over $1,700 in sales of the stuff that we have on the website. People are getting involved, and they're saying, hey, I want to, I want to be involved. I want to scream about this. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be lots of action points that we're going to have people go to you know, to do together. We're going to, even though we're going to be all around the world, we're going to be in unison on the same times of day, but the legendary campaign.com. That's where you can find it. Awesome, man. Love it. Uh, and I, I would be happy to help out in any way that I can. I do graphic design and video and all that stuff. So hit me up and we'll keep in touch about it. Cause definitely something that, uh, I, I believe needs to be uh, out there just as much as you do. So all for it, man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. For sure. Well, yeah, let's uh, let's stick around and do a little bit of bonus for the patrons. But uh, until 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 next time, Tom, thanks so much for being here and you're always welcome. Thank you so much, man. Hey, guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Tom as much as I always do. Tom's a great guy. Very fascinating stuff that he's digging into. We talked about a lot of different topics in the bonus episode. Uh, We got into things like Halloween, occult imagery in movies and media today, and um, just went a bunch of different fun rabbit trails. So check that out. You can find that right now by going to patreon.com forward slash the system is down and signing up for as little as $5 a month. Do it. Do it now. You'll not only get that episode, but our big backlog of bonus episodes that we put out every single week and our future bonus episodes that come out every single week. So check that out, patreon.com forward slash the system is down and help keep the show afloat, help keep us getting bigger and better and more beautiful. 
Also, be sure to tune in to the Anti-News Live broadcast tonight, every Monday night at 9 o'clock Central. Uh, that's where Craig and I uh, cover the current events and things that are happening in the world, things going on in the news. And if all goes according to plan, we're planning on having Tom come on the Anti-News Live broadcast tonight to do a short segment and talk a little bit more about this case and the, the stuff that he's got going on. It'll be a short segment, but if you got uh, some questions that you want to ask him, you can go to antinewslive.com and watch the live broadcast. And you can call in, you can write in, you can leave us voicemails, you can... Uh, you know, chat in the chat section. It's a good time. It's a good, chill, fun, live party. Um, so check that out tonight. And also, if you want to ask Tom questions, but you can't make it to the Anti-News Live, just uh, go on over to the Systems Down Forum. It's a safe haven for these uncomfortable topics where people speak civilly to each other and have wonderful, beautiful disagreements about uncomfortable things. So check that out at tsidpod.com forward slash forum. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe the show on all the platforms that you can find it on. I'm getting a notification somewhere. I don't know what it is, but screw you, Facebook. Screw you, Facebook, for interrupting my rambling. It, it knew that we were talking about it, so it had to chime in. But as I was saying, go over to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all the things that you can find us on. And please like, share, and subscribe to the show. That would be fantastic. Leave us a review on iTunes. That'd be great. That's a great way for completely free and almost it takes you no time at all to help this show get bigger and better and help people know what they're getting when they tune into this show so that they don't waste their time if they think it's going to be like, I don't know, CNN or NPR or something like that. I don't know why they would think that, but. There you go. I don't know. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Once again, it's it's a pleasure. I love giving you guys these episodes. I hope you're still enjoying them. Please continue to go out and talk to people about these uncomfortable topics. Please continue to go out and share the show. I appreciate it more than I can possibly emphasize and express in these long rambling outros. So keep doing that, and I will love you forever. And uh, I will also... If you'll have me, be right back here in your ear canal first thing next Monday morning with some more uncomfortable content. Tune into the anti-news tonight, and uh, until next week, question everything and stay uncomfortable. Thanks. This has been a Goulash Media production. Goulashmedia.net. This concludes our broadcast day. Click. <laughs> <laughs>